Hello everyone, this is Rubal Purohit and you're watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, I'm presenting you the seventh session of organometallic compounds. In the previous six parts, I've discussed with you all introduction, what exactly organometallic compounds are all about, then the three types of organometallic compounds and the classification, and then five methods of preparations. Next, I started with the first chemical property and that was about action of oxygen and halogen. Total, there are five chemical properties. Already one is being done, four remains. So in this session, we start with the second chemical property and the name of that chemical property is alkylation or arylation. So here we go. Alkylation or arylation. First of all, my dear friends, I'll explain you what exactly this is all about, okay? And then I'll give you some examples. So in alkylation and arylation, we have an organometallic compound. Now what type of organometallic compound that also I would like to specify, and that is, it will be a alkyl or a aryl derivative of certain metals, generally electropositive metals, such as lithium. So I have say LIR, because lithium is monovalent, its valency is one. Next is we have ALR3, aluminium valency is three, so we write it down as ALR3, where R is going to be an alkyl or the aryl group. Now this organometallic compound is going to combine with the halides of the main group elements. Main group elements means S and the P block elements. All right, now here, please make a note, and that is transition metals also have forms reactions with organometallic compounds. But here, as far as the syllabus is concerned, we are restricting ourselves only to the main group elements. All right, so this is what the reaction is all about. And then when these two reacts, obviously there has to be a product form and it results in the formation of new organometallic compounds. So from one organometallic compound, we'll be getting another organometallic compound. This is what the reaction is all about. But then because we are involving an alkyl or the aryl group, and therefore we call this reaction as alkylation or arylation. I'll give you some examples so that you understand this very well. So first of all is, we start with magnesium halide. Okay, so when you talk about magnesium halide, MgX2, I'm going to treat this with LiR. Now, as far as the bond breaking process is concerned, it may be either a complete bond breaking or it can be partial, all right? So here it's going to be partial. So only one of the bond between the magnesium and the halide is going to break. The bond between Li and R is going to break. The X will go towards Li and then this R will form a bond with magnesium and gives you the most prominent reagent in organic chemistry. Yes, you guys did try. It's Grignard reagent R N G X. And plus, of course, I am getting what? An IX. Okay, so this is uh, one of the examples. Similarly, we can have ALCL3 combining with LIR. This bond breaks. Now, this is an example of a complete bond breaking. Okay, so obviously, we are going to get LICL. And here, what happens is AL will go with R. As the Cl will go towards lithium, the R group will go towards aluminium. And we are going to have ALR3 since aluminium valency is three, so we get ALR3, all right? So maybe this is one example. Next, another example I like to give you is BCL3. It is being treated with PBME4, tetramethyl lead, all right? So the bond between the lead and the methyl group is going to break. Here also it's an example of a complete bond breaking taking place. So as a result of which, the Cl will go towards lead, here lead is supposed to have a oxidation state of 4, so I write it down as PBCl4. Boron, it's the element of group 13, which aluminium is belonging to, and therefore the valency is going to be 3. So we are going to write down over here as BME thrice, because here I'm specifying the alkyl group, and that is going to be methyl, so it is trimethyl boron. 
all right some more examples and that is i'll take an example of uh, group 14 okay that is germanium so gcl4 i'm going to treat this gcl4 with respect to say lir it's a complete bond breaking process taking place. So now you guessed it right what the products are going to be. So here you get LICL. All right, when it is going to be four and when it's going to be one, I hope you understood this. That depends upon the nature of the metal with which the halogen is attached to. Okay, so here because it is lithium, so it's monovalent, so it will be only one chlorine. And then of course, what are we going to get over here is GER4. Germanium is tetravalent, so it is going to be tetraalkyl or aryl germanium. All right, similarly, I can give an example of uh, ACL3, and that is going to go with ALR3, that is tri um, alkyl or triaryl aluminium. So what happens is, complete bond breaking process taking place. Arsenic is trivalent. Okay, it's going to be, uh, trivalent state is going to be much more stable. So that's the reason we are going to consider the trivalent state. So as a result of which we are going to get over here is R3 and plus. What are we going to get is, A is going to be the R and aluminum will go with chlorine. So we have AlCl3. Okay, there are going to be three chlorine because the valency of aluminum is three. So my dear friends, these are the reactions. Okay, whereby we have taken examples with respect to the already we have organometallic compounds, the alkyl or the aryl derivatives of electropositive metals. I will consider lead as well because it belongs to group 14 and last element of group 14. Okay, so in our group, the last element, the element which is right at the bottom, is going to be highly electropositive. All right, so that is what lead is all about. So we already have an organometallic compound that is being treated with halides of. Uh, the main group elements, that is we have S and the P block elements, you can take these examples, magnesium, aluminium, boron, germanium, all right, uh, arsenic, okay, these are all main group elements, and that will combine to give you a new organometallic compounds, all right, now depending upon the R part, it can be either alkyl or aryl, and accordingly we call this as alkylation or arylation. I hope you have understood up to this 